Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Lamar Tyler. I'm excited and glad to have you here today as we talk about something that is going to help you increase your family, increase the knowledge that your children have, and increase the way they view and understand themselves, right? So um, if you're the parent of an African-American child, right, or a black child, I want you to make sure you're tuned in and locked into today's conversation. If you know someone it is, I want you to tag them down below because they're going to love what we are talking about today as we discuss, right, teaching your kids black history facts instead of fiction, right? Teach your kids black history facts instead of fiction. My name is Lamar Tyler. I'm the creator and founder of Traffic, Sales, and Profit. I'm also co-founder along with my wife, Ronnie, of blackandmarriedwithkids.com. So you may be seeing me on either one of the platforms. We're streaming now live to over 600,000 of our Facebook friends, family, followers, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to call them, right? Over 600,000 of you all around the globe right now. And I'm excited about this conversation, like I said, we're having today with my good friend, Freddie Taylor. So without further ado, let me tell you about Freddie, and then we're going to bring him on. I want you to, to make sure you're locked in, make sure you have uh, pens, pads, pencils, do whatever you need to do. I want you to take notes. We're going to give you resources. We're going to give you information. We're going to give you knowledge so that you can, can separate, right, the fact versus fiction as it relates to black history, as it relates to um, um, and black history, not just in this country, right? Not just starting with slavery, but beyond that, before that, with my good man, Freddie. So let me tell you about Freddie Taylor. He is an engaging entrepreneur, philanthropist, always has a question, right? Those are just a few words that describe Freddie E. Taylor, founder and CEO of Urban Intellectuals. Spurred by the lack of black history uh, instruction that his sons received in grammar school, Freddie knew the onus was on him to create a new narrative of black culture. And in 2009, UI, Urban Intellectuals, was born. Initially, UI was an online hub of black media that now boasts, get this y'all, over 1 million Facebook fans. And that's legit. You can go to the page, right? Look it up, search it on, on, on Facebook. Urban Intellects, over 1 million Facebook fans. They have a mobile app and they have their own social media network. Today, the company has several products, including the renowned Black History flashcards. They generate over seven figures, right? Seven figures in revenue a year. From teaching black history, how many of you even thought that was possible? We, we might dive into that a little bit too. UI has aggressively taken a lead role in engaging, educating, and empowering people who are curious and passionate about the African diaspora. And to date, over 200,000 black history flashcards have been sold and featured in places such as Essence, The Huffington Post, CBS Chicago, Good Morning Washington, Milwaukee PBS, and Sister Circle on TV One. Additionally, Urban Intellectuals has enjoyed 2018 and 2019 Black History Month collaboration with JetBlue, the airline. The popular flashcards were enlarged and displayed through terminals in John F. Kennedy uh, and Newark airports in New York and New Jersey. Y'all, without further ado, please join me in welcoming to today's discussion my good friend, Freddie Taylor. Hey, what's up, Freddie? How are you? Hey, I'm great, brother. How you doing? Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. Oh, no, no problem. I'm excited about uh, today's talk and conversation because... You know, the kids are home now. Um, everyone's spending more time than they have in a long time, probably with their children, because the children are home, but not just <laughs> in, in straight summer mode, right? They're at home and still supposed to be learning, still supposed to be getting educated. So, so why not take this time to educate them on something other than what the school systems and what the districts have been giving them? So, so th this is going to be yeah. good, man. I'm excited about today. Yeah, yeah, me too, brother. I, I'm, look, you know, this is my passion, so I love talking about it and engaging, but. Uh... I think our parents need it, and it's about time, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so let me ask you, Freddie, before we jump into it, again, let, let's go into the background of how you got into um, educating, right? Educating the black community and the black community's children around these black history facts and just about themselves. Because you said it started with your two sons, is that right? Yeah, it started with my sons. Um, you know, but really, if you go back a little bit before that, I grew up with my father, um, and he was born in 1929, and he's like a you think I'm a history buff. Like he's, he's super serious about history. Right. But of course, growing up being a young, a young man, I didn't really pay attention as much as I should have. Uh, but then once I started having children of my own, and then you kind of get a second opportunity to go through the educational system, you start noticing all the glaring weaknesses and holes inside of the system. And, um, you know, quite honestly, we're just left out of the discussion completely. So that's the mission of urban intellectuals is to write us back into the pages of world history uh, and the hearts and the minds of our people. But in order to do that, we need to start with the children. So it gave me an opportunity to figure that instead of complaining about somebody should do this, somebody should do that, you know, one day we became somebody. And, and, and let me ask you with, with your sons, um, 
And how, how old are your sons again now? Uh, now they're 16 and 20. Okay, so, so you you a vet in this, right? You got one. You yeah. got one. <laughs> you got one that's, that's you know uh, a grown or close to it, right? Depending on what the definition of grown close. is, and you, and you got one. Close is, to it. <laughs> you got one as well on the way. So with your sons, yeah. when they were younger, um, was was it pretty much you know you had the feeling a lot of parents have now of like, all right, this, this is not black history that they're teaching them. Some of the history they teach them is wrong about us um they're not doing enough of it and you just said hey i want to dive in more like what was that like for you and your wife crystal um when the boys were younger and you wanted to educate them about themselves and in the history of their people man you know we, it's really kind of like it is today you really find out that the onus is on you because there's no assistance from the school system um you know we often talked about how every year of black history is like the same eight to 12 people, 12 if you're in a progressive district, uh, they're talking <laughs> about the same individuals over and over again from you know kindergarten through 12th grade. And it's like the conversation is so much deeper than that. So you know we found that if, if it, what it, what's the saying, if it is to be, it's up to me. Uh, right. So we had to do our job in filling in the gaps in their education. And to be honest with you, when our children were younger, I wouldn't say we failed, but we definitely wasn't as honed in on it as we are now. And we understand the repercussions now because of our children being older. And I wish I would have started uh, aggressively much sooner. Uh, so, you know, Urban Intellectuals thankfully came around and provided the tools and resources that I wish I would have had when my children were smaller. So that's kind of like where we see us fitting into the marketplace. It's it's fulfilling a, a wish that I, I had, you know, 15 years ago, or I should have mm -hmm. had 15 years ago um, for parents today so that they don't have to uh, kind of go through the strife that we went to through then. Mm, that's good. Hey guys, if you are uh, joining us, right, uh, just joining us, just logging in. Hey, my name is Lamar Tyler, creative founder of Traffic Sales and Profit, co-founder with my wife, Ronnie of blackandmarriedwithkids.com. I'm here today with Freddie Taylor. He's the CEO of Urban Intellectuals. So, so Freddie, let's talk about, in the bio, I mentioned it, that uh, you guys have these Black History flashcards. So a lot of people um, that are on, right, uh, may be familiar with them. A lot of you may have seen them on Facebook, seen people talking about them, seen advertisements <laughs> for them here. There we go, right? I was going to say, um, could you tell yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, you know I got right, <laughs> Exactly. I, I knew you. I knew they were in arm's reach somewhere around you, right? <laughs> so, so tell people a little bit more about the cards and what they do. And then I'm curious to, to know, like, what's the reaction to people when they see the cards, when they talk about them, or how do they kind of help use them? Uh, with their children or to educate their grandchildren as well? Okay, uh, well, the cards, uh, each volume uh, has a specific set of topics that we that we engage with. They all come in a series of 52 cards in each deck. Uh, you know, very high quality. I'm all uh, biased by that, but I, I like to think that we put, our, we put our foot into these. There's a little picture information on the front, uh, bullet-pointed information on the back, so we like to call it bite-sized nuggets and chunks. Uh, but volume one is dedicated to a general history. So there's more African-Americans involved in that kind of here in the, the Americas. Then volume two is an all black women series. Volume three is a STEAM series. So science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics. Volume four is a before 1492 series. So it starts about 35,000 years ago and comes up to 1492. And then volume five is an Afro-Latin and Afro-Caribbean series uh, that we put together. So the... The ideal or the concept here is to show uh, the, the African diaspora as a whole, right? Because here in America, we're kind of taught that, hey, you guys were, you came from nothing but slaves and you guys are slaves and you guys came pretty far since slavery, but that's to truncate us from our uh, roots, right? Because we are global people and that's what the flashcards kind of aim to show and bring together. Because um, this concentration or this infatuation with slavery here in the United States is something that I feel like is a real problem. Um, like they say, slavery isn't black history, it's interrupted black history. Uh, so that's something that we have to make sure that we're concentrating on and we're pushing into our young children. Um, to answer the second part of your question, like what are some of the things that the parents are saying? Um, they are really ecstatic that they're, they're, they have an opportunity to learn alongside their children, right? Because obviously your children is not gonna know much of these facts because the school systems have deliberately left us out of these facts. Um, but a lot of the parents are saying, wow, I just really didn't realize how much I didn't, re I don't know. Uh, so they're really thankful that we put together a resource like this for them to not only learn themselves, but to teach their children uh, as they grow. 
you, you know, so so that's good because as you talk about that, it, it makes me think. Why why is it that you think that that more, um, you know, black parents aren't ingraining this in their children as a young age? Is it just the fact that they don't know themselves, and you know, is it the fact that they just too busy with work and different stuff going on? Is it the fact that hey, we just assume that the school is doing it and that they got it handled? You know, I mean, because you've been in this space for a minute, so like like what's some of the reasons you think that that parents just aren't on their own able to get a hold of this information and then share it? You know, um, that's that's a good question. But some of the things that we found is a lot of them are embarrassed that they don't know this information. They feel like they should know it uh, and they should be able to pass it along to their children. So it's kind of a hard discussion to have with your friends and your family to say, hey, you know, um, I, I want to teach my children about black history, but I don't really know anything about it myself. You know, uh, the black community, we always got bravado and we always act like we know everything anyway. Um, so to to humble yourselves. And to do something like that kind of takes a lot. So a lot of the parents are really enjoying the fact that, you know, now that they have a resource that they can utilize and allow them to help bring their children along. And then I think it's a combination of some of the other things that you mentioned. I mean, they're busy. I mean, you know, you got two parent households. Folks are trying to eat and survive. We're living check to check. Uh, there's <laughs> there's not a lot of time for engagement in extracurriculars like um, learning black history. Right. And then I think uh, compounded is the fact that a lot of us think that once you go through or matriculate through the educational system, you're educated, right? Um, and they think that, ah, well, maybe black history isn't as important as it, as it could be, right? But I, I, found, I found that to be like the tragic, uh, the Achilles heel in our, in our community, right? This thinking that, oh, that's just history is not important and everybody's together and we're family now and we're moving forward. Um, but that's that's just a real problem. I, and if you don't mind me, let me go on a quick rant real quick. Sure, go for um, it. <laughs> this, this, uh, this idea about the Western educational system being broken, right? Not teaching us black history, right? I, I've Lately, I've been I've come to the conclusion or the understanding that the Western educational system isn't broken. It's doing exactly what it was intended to do. And it's exactly and what that is, is to uh, embolden the spirit, the confidence and the aspirations of young white children. And they do that by showing them a world and giving them a history that emboldens them, that shows them as the, uh, the creators, the scientists, the, the doctors, the lawyers, the engineers, uh, the architects, uh, and the, the, the creators of civilization and society, because that makes their young children grow up to feel confident that they belong, this world belongs to them, they have a place in it, and they can go out and achieve anything that they want to do. So the Western educational system is doing exactly what it was designed to do. It's us that have a problem with it that's saying, hey, well, why are we represented? Well, it wasn't written out for you, right? So this is why it's imperative that parents today get involved and teach their children their history and their culture because of all those things that it does for the white children. If you replace it with the truth and include us into those pages, then our children grow up with the confidence knowing that we're the founders of civilization, we're the founders of medicine, astrology, uh, anthropology of, you know, of everything, really, agriculture, uh, the whole nine. Uh, so it just really develops a different sense of uh, passion and confidence in our children that I think is necessary. I love it. Let me tell you, the, the, the comments are going crazy. Um, uh, Melanie, what's going on, Melanie? Melanie said, just calling it an extracurricular is also a problem because our history should be a part of our everyday life. Mindset is everything. I love I love that. I know Freddie was going to like that. That's why I, I had to read that. that. I love that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Right, right. Same old Freddie B was saying extracurricular, right? <laughs> but uh, that's kind of how it's viewed, right? It's like, oh, let's attach this little thing about black people onto the end of all of these important lessons. Uh, and I, I definitely think that, that that entire focus is what's off in our community. Mm, this is good. Hey, guys, I see y'all in the, in the comments going crazy and join us. If you're enjoying this conversation, I need you to share this on your pages. Um, share this in your groups and in your actual you know, communities across social media. Whatever you need to do, tag a friend or a person that you know that is a parent, that is an educator, right? There are a lot of educators that you know. Um, shout out to Dr. Michelle, a good friend of ours, Dr. Michelle um, Johnson in North Carolina has a, a school along with her husband, and they're doing a phenomenal job. They said they actually have the, flat, the uh, Black History flashcards. They bought them for the school, and they actually use them. Um, so that's amazing. So guys, if, if you have a school, if you're an educator, something like that, you got to get a hold of these products. Somebody said they want all the products. They said they want your t-shirt too, Freddie. Like, like they, are, <laughs> they are foaming at the mouth down here in the comments, right? They can't get enough. This, this is some good stuff that y'all getting. Um, 
<laughs> All right, so so let me ask you because I'm curious because you talk to a lot of people, right? Between um, online, between you know your Facebook page with over a million people, you have a Facebook group. Um, you know the Facebook group is thriving and, and rolling now, and you guys have gotten that going. What's the name of the Facebook group again, Freddie? Uh, Raising proud black children. All right, raising proud black children. The Facebook group. So between that, and then you know you guys uh, uh, vend at a, a different place, a lot of different places. You were at Essence last year. Um, you know, you go around different different cities and do a lot. You talk to a lot of people. And when you talk to a lot of people, I'm curious, what are some of the misconceptions or um, or about just our history, right, that, that, that we have, not even that other cultures have, that you walk up to, to somebody and somebody comes up to you and you say something and they're like, I didn't, I didn't believe that. Or maybe they don't even believe you sometimes when you say something. So what are like some of the misconceptions that, that you may see or hear from people sometimes? Uh, well, I think the misconceptions are, one, rooted in the educational system that we just accept wholeheartedly. We just start drinking in uh, whatever poisons the Western educational system feed us. But, like, when you start to talk about, you know, the founders of medicine, uh, you know, and, and bringing up Imhotep, uh, who was known to be the first uh, uh, doctor, right? And he had all these healings and doing medical sur surgeries. You find out that people in our community are even aware of this brother uh, who was really just like a Renaissance man, the creator of the step pyramid uh, and a lot of other things. But I'm often, I'm often blown away. You know, like we, we attributed so much to the Greek culture uh, and, and the creation of, of medicine and all of, all of the sciences and things of this nature and philosophy. Um, but, you know, I, we can have this other shirt. I wish I would have had it with me. Uh, and it says, guess who taught the Greeks? And the words outline Africa, right? Because the Greeks sat at the knee of your ancestors uh, and learned from them. And then when they went on to write about world history, they wrote your ancestors right out of world history. So those are some of the things that, you know, people are kind of taken aback by uh, when, when I start talking about different elements of our history. Um, a lot of people are floored uh, about the Moors. A lot of people don't know anything about Moorish history. Um, I love to bring this up because... There's often times like, you know, like uh, we all went through the same. Most of us went through the Western educational system. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know how they talk about that period of the dark ages. Right. Like 800. Oh, there was nothing going on from 800 to about uh, 1492. When what happened in 1492? Princess Isabella and King Ferdinand got together. Right. Uh, and then they sailed west and discovered the new world and all that pretty stuff. But there was like a 700 year period of no discussion of, of blackness. Right. And it's interesting because, they, you know, I use that word blackness because Europe was actually dominated by the Moors, right, which are North Africans uh, that look like you and I. Right. But they brought civilization to a place where, you know, there was barbarism and and uh, and, and a destitution going on. Right. Uh, but they had hundreds of universities and and uh, libraries and, you know, sewer systems. And, you know, they brought bathing uh, to the people. But this is from 711. A.D. to 1491, uh, 1492, excuse me, uh, when they were finally overthrown out of Europe. But a lot of people aren't aware of this information. But this is the, these are the types of things that the Western educational system hides, <laughs> tucks away in the, in the recesses of history uh, so that you don't know these things, that you can't tie the puzzle together. So that's our aim is to try to bring this information to the light uh, and allow our community to know about it, be proud of our history and heritage. And understand again that we aren't descendants of slaves and slavery was just a bleak period in our history uh like i said it's not slavery isn't black history it's interrupted black history mm, i love it i love it i love it right uh again the comments going crazy <laughs> crazy down below um guys uh the the shirts um the cards everything right is on freddie's site uh, if you go to store.urbanintellectuals.com i gotta address that freddie because because we, we're about to have a fight down in the comments, if I don't let people know where to get these shirts and these cards from, so you, go to, you go to store.urbanintellectuals.com, store.urbanintellectuals.com to get a hold of all of that. Uh, and we'll, we'll drop it later on, um, post interview down in the description and everything like that for you as well. Um, I love it because this is one of my favorite shirts as well. So, you know, I, I feel them on this one. Freddie, t tell them what some of the other shirts say because I know, I know, I just know they'll enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got one called. Uh, well, the, our our biggest seller right now is busy making our busy making my ancestors proud. So th that's one that always resonates well with the people, because um, I mean we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors, right? Um, so they got us this far. We have to continue to mantle. And I always like to remind people that one day you're going to be the ancestors, right? So make sure that your lifetime is spent mm -hmm. 
uh, making the next generation worthy and proud as well. Um, guess who caught, taught the Greeks is another one of my favorites. Uh, the Underground Railroad is still open, uh, which is uh, like a great one for me because, again, like we have to continue ushering our people not out of physical bondage, but mental bondage. Uh, so that's kind of where the fight is now. Black history every single day is is one that I, I wear routinely uh, because, again, uh, we we, we got to stay in the fight. Right. There we go. I love it. Yeah, like, what's a up? couple of other that's escaping me right, yeah. right now. I'm sure I, as soon as we get off, I remember all of them. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Lashana Fitzgerald, one of our TSP fam. She said, I have busy making my ancestors proud, and I love it. Um, so shout out to you, Lashonda, right? Um, hey, so, so, um, Freddie, so I got something I want to do. For one, guys, if you got uh, questions for Freddie um, about any things he's done, about, you know, uh, maybe some things you can do with your children, about some ideas you have or, or ideas you don't have, right, and you want more insight on, I want you to drop those questions down to the comments. We're going to go to Q&A in just one minute. Um, while we're doing that, Freddie, I wanted to actually talk about um, one of the newer programs that you guys have as well before we go to Q&A called the Sankofa Club because you guys have really taken okay. an initiative beyond the flashcards. You said, okay, the flashcards are our version one of how we can help, but then we want to do more to actually get um, in this online space and, and educate at the deeper levels. Can you talk about the Sankofa Club just a little bit? Yeah, uh, you know, the Sankofa Club, the idea kind of came out of that because I grew up uh, with Highlights Magazine, for any of you that are interested or remember Highlights Magazine, either, if you didn't have a subscription, you probably saw it at the doctor's or the dentist's office, right? Friday. So it's just fun field oh. activities and games that you can play and puzzles and, and uh, you know, word searches and mazes and, you know, spot the difference and all sorts of types of uh, fun activities, right? So I grew up with something like that. I thought it was great, but like all most things in this society, it's all whitewashed, right? So instead of having a whitewashed version, I thought that a culturally relevant version that promoted black history and culture would be appropriate for our people. Uh, so we started what we call the Sankofa Club. And uh, Sankofa, Sankofa is an interesting term as well, but it means to go back and get it, right? So it's to go back in our history, go back in our culture and bring forward our stories so that we can share them with the current people and the, uh, the present and the future, right? So it's a, a Ghanaian turn out of the Twi language um, to just give you a little bit of background. Uh, but so the Sankofa Club is, instead of it being a physical magazine, you're able to get an online subscription. And each month we update that with over a hundred uh, plus sheets and activities that engage our children and our history and our culture in a fun way, right? Rather than just trying to beat their heads with books, uh, these are engaging puzzles and challenges and activities for the writing prompts and things of that nature for them to engage in and have fun and to educate you along the way. But the background or the backdrop of all of that is they're learning their history and their culture. Uh, each month is four different uh, individuals or, or, or events that are attacked. Uh, so they have like a vocabulary list where they can get into it. This is our... Um, yeah, our Great Minds edition. So here we're talking about Imhotep, the Goat, the Dogons, Marie Van Britten Brown, which is a creator, uh, and then Maurice Ashley, who is a uh, grandmaster in chess. I'm a chess player. My children play chess. We believe in that as well. But it gives the kids an opportunity to have fun and just engage in some activities, but they're learning their history and their culture along the way. Uh, so I just think it's a great way to kind of mold men the two together. Um, they have fun activities, and it, we just so happen to be quarantined, right? And parents are looking for ways <laughs> to engage their children. Uh, so we definitely think this is a great one. It ranges from ages 3 to 12 years old. Um, there are actually three different levels inside of there. So it's red, black, and green uh, based on the flag that Marcus Garvey gave to us, right? Most people don't know uh, where the red, black, and green flag came from. Uh, but uh, the red level is our lowest level. The black is the middle level, and the green is the higher level. Uh, so things get increasingly more complex, let's put it that way, as you rise up the ranks. But, um, yeah, so like the parents are saying there and the kids are enjoying it and they're basically calling it the Black Highlights magazine uh, that's culturally relevant and timely in this moment of the Rona. <laughs> Gotta love our people, right? <laughs> We're dropping down in the actual comment box right now a special link for you guys um uh, bit.ly forward slash um uh 
saying Clofa Club offer, right? Um, and watch out this case center, so you got to do it the way it's doing. So we're dropping that down to the comment on YouTube. We'll have it down in the description. But right now, Freddie and his crew, they have a special offer. And I'll share that for you guys, too. Um, but it literally is a special offer they have going on right now um, where you can get your hands on the Sankofa Club for just 99 cents. Freddie, are y'all crazy? What is this all about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just a little bit crazy, but we're crazy passionate about ensuring that our community gets the opportunity to share our history and our culture with their young people. I love it. I love it. And you guys can see right there um, uh, on the screen as I'm scrolling down, you can see... Um, this is the actual page. When you go to the link that I just shared or that we shared down in the chat, um, uh, you'll see all these uh, different information, everything you want. Click here, Sankofa Club, first month is only 99 cents. I'm encouraging you all, right? Would you say that your history is worth 99 cents? Would you say that, you know, teaching and educating your children is worth 99 cents? Of course you would. So you literally have nothing to lose. I want to make sure everybody in our community gets behind this program, gets behind this club, right? If you're one of the over 200,000, uh, uh, people that have ordered the uh, Black History flashcards, you need to get your kids into this program. And Freddie, somebody asked again about the ages for the actual Sankofa Club. Yes, ages three through 12 years old. Um, and I'll give you a little bit more. Um, we're actually adding some digital components back there. So like you can log in and there's right there, they can color like digitally online. There's a coloring sheets. So our coloring sheet activities will be infused in there. We have some... Um, puzzles and mazes, some uh, slider puzzles that are digital as well. So like if you're on the go or if they're on their iPad or their phones or whatnot, they can still engage in our history and our culture. And for our older children, uh, even going beyond, pushing beyond 12, we're starting to work in our Black History flashcard course, right? So we're going to take the cards to the next level and then start teaching uh, courses based around our, our components here as well. So that'll be for the old pushing into the uh, preteens, teenagers uh, level as well. So we're working on that. Uh, don't hold me to the date. We're pushing as fast as we can. Uh, hopefully within the next week or two, we should start being able to push those out as well. We're going to start with a base of about four or five lessons. Uh, and then each week we'll update with an additional lesson. Still, um, guys, if you have any questions at all, Mr. Freddie Taylor, do me a favor, drop them down below in the chat. Um, we're going to start taking a few questions um, before we have to wrap up. Um, I see people coming in. And if you're coming in, again, I want to remind you, share this. This is the message that we need to be sharing. There's going to be a lot of stuff that's being shared across social media during um, these times where everybody's home, a lot of people online, a lot more people than normal. So this is the kind of information and content that we need to be sharing and getting out to our actual community. There we go. Melanie said, great. She was looking for resources for her four-year-old. So that's awesome. I'm sure we'll see you inside the Sankofa Club. Uh, Melanie, right, especially with a 99 cent yeah. offer. That is amazing. Um, uh, awesome. Let me see. There's a lot of stuff down in the comments. It's a, it's a lot of love it's. <laughs> it's a lot of love it, love it, love it down in the comments, Freddie. I'm trying to, trying to weave my way through the love it's. Uh, awesome. That's and they said sure. they have shared it as well as they kind of move through and go through. Hey, I'm curious, Freddie. I wanted to ask you this too. Um, any kind of little known black history facts that people are surprised about as they kind of go through the cards or they go through the Sankofa Club um, that you kind of see and that you like, you know, it's like, oh, I bet you don't, they don't know this one. And then you get to kind of pull it out and show it to Ooh. them that comes up. I know, I know you got a bunch of them, but any, like, if you could get some of, the, some of your most favorite ones. Um, wow, man, that's funny because I, I literally just cut the deck and said, let me just see what I see, right? <laughs> so when I come to uh, Ida B. Wells, Ida B. Wells is, Ida B. Wells is one of my absolute favorite black history figures. Um, but Many people don't know in, I want to get the year right. Okay, in the 1890s, 18, 1887. 1887, Ida B. Wells was on a train, right? And the conductor tried to get her to get up and give her seat and move to the back of the train, right? And she refused. Now, again, this is 1887. Like, put this in context, right? 1887, a black woman refuses to move for white men. The conductor comes to the back. They try to physically grab her and remove her, and she bites them on the hand, right? Like, she absolutely refuses. So, of course, they arrest her. They take her to jail. Uh, but she took the or case to court and actually won her case and had it thrown out. Uh, so, way before Rosa Parks, you know, there was Ida B. Wells, which I don't know why that story has gotten lost in our history. But many times, uh, people are often bringing that up, you know, like, wow, I had no idea 
uh, that she was so aggressive, but uh, she was, right? <laughs> yeah, right. She exactly. believed in her personhood. Yeah, I love yeah. It. That's that's right. a that's always a great one. G- give give me another uh, uh, little known or one we may not know a lot about. Like Freddie said, I just cut the deck, right? It's like I had to look. I just cut the deck and see what I got right here. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Uh, Martin Delaney, right? Most people aren't familiar mm-hmm. with this brother, uh, but he is probably you know uh, they call him um, one of the a most prominent black, uh, first black nationalist. Uh, and he is actually accredited as being one of the idols and, and of like Marcus Garvey, of all of the, na- the black nationalists that we think about. But we don't really talk about the brother. He was a medical doctor. Um, and he has obviously was in the military as well. But I just think that um, just like so many names that get lost uh, in our history and our culture, because again, we're concentrating on the eight to 12 people. Again, 12 if you're in the progressive school district during Black History Month uh, from kindergarten to 12th grade. I can't understand how at this point in time the conversation hasn't expanded much further than that. But Martin Delaney is another brother that you should look up uh, and dig into. But the father of black nationalism, one of the fathers of black nationalism, right? All right. All right, Freddie, I'm I'm having a little bit too much fun. I need you to cut the deck one more time. Give me one more person. And then (laughs) cut the deck. I like like saying that. Cut the deck. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so let me shuffle, let me shuffle. Make sure I ain't. Uh, I ain't oh yeah, that. nah, yeah. I, I, I saw, I saw, I saw President Obama. That's too easy. That's too easy, Freddie. We got it. Yeah, that's gotta, too easy. That's too layup. easy. That's the layup. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh man. So I cut it. Then I saw two. But I, I'll start with. Uh, I give two more. Okay. So, so John Horace. All right. John Horace uh, is a, a. They call him a black similar leader, right? So a lot of us were here already in the Americas, the so-called Indians, right? Uh, with the darker skin tone. But anyway, this brother fought America, uh, right? Okay, so the only revolutionaries that they talk about really are Nat Turner, right? He fought back, this and that Mm -hmm. is Nat Turner. Well, there are are hundreds of thousands of people who fought back, right? So we have to make sure, I believe that we have to make sure that we're sharing those stories because um, it's, hey, if we ever find ourselves in this position again, we're going to need these types of people, right? So we got to make sure that our young people know that that heartbeat uh, flows through their blood, right? Um, but John Horse actually fought the United States government for 50 years, right? 50 years. They couldn't catch this brother. He ran around uh, the southern state gathering up um, um, so-called slaves and so-called uh, in, 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 in enslaved people uh, and had them fighting for freedom uh, and m- moving most of them uh, into Mexico. He actually developed a settlement down there. So a lot of people are stunned when they find out about John Horse. So I t- tell you to look him up. And then I just saw Huey P. Newton, uh, um, which most people are familiar with. And I, the Black Panther Party for self-defense. I love to bring up that part because we often leave that out and just call them the Panthers or the Black Panthers. But it was the Black Panther Party of self-defense. Right. They specifically formed this organization for a reason. Um, but I also love to put on their Ph.D. Can you see that? Yeah. We can Ph.D. See it. Yeah, the brother is an educated brother, right? Like they they try to portray them as thugs and gangsters, right? But that's not the case. These young brothers and sisters were educated of the educated class. So we always like to include that PhD in there. A lot of people are surprised to find that out because again, that's often left out. All right, y'all. So I want to know, did, did you enjoy that? If you enjoyed that, um, give me some love down in the comments. Give us some um, some hearts, some likes or something, right? Give us, give us a comment. Like I said, tag somebody. Even tag them now because that way they'll get to come back and watch this later, even though they may not get to watch it the same time as you. It's important that they watch it. All of you know someone that needed to see this conversation today. All right. Um, and again, right, I want to remind you guys, if you, you say, hey, I want to get my hands on those cards, I want to get my hands on the T-shirt, they are available in the Urban Intellectual store at store.urbanintellectuals.com. And I'm telling you, I want all of you to get a hold of the Sankofa Club. Freddie gave us a special offer of just 99 cents. 99 cents to get started for you and your children in the Sankofa Club. This is your opportunity, right? It's literally nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, right? For a buck, you can get started this month, get a hold and access to the information and watch how it begins to transform and shift the mindset of your children as they kind of go through um, uh, the actual materials, right? The coloring sheets, we showed them to you as Freddie was talking, the coloring sheets, the crosswords. Um, there was a handwriting. Freddie, I saw some cursive in there. Y'all will get in trouble teaching yeah. cursive now. <laughs> You know, you know, I don't think we're supposed to be really teaching people cursive no more, right? Y'all, you're crossing lines. Next thing I know, you're going to be hey. teaching, teaching old math in there, too. I don't know. 
<laughs> we, we believe in raising revolutionaries, Lamar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hey, Freddie, uh, one more time. Can you tell people how to reach you, how to get a hold of you, um, you know, uh, what the name of the Facebook group is, again, so they can join the Facebook group as well? Okay. Uh, the Facebook group is Raising Proud Black Children. You can just search Raising Proud Black Children on Facebook and we'll come on up. We're approaching about 10,000 members in there. Uh, people who are interested in raising proud black children, right? That's our, what our focus and we're coming together. Uh, if you are on Facebook and Instagram, we're at Urban Intellectuals. You can come and join the millions of people that are communing with us there and building and growing a special community of people interested in writing the black community back into the pages of world history and to the hearts and the minds of our people. All right. I love it. I love it. All right. Thank you again, Freddie. I appreciate you, man, for showing up for the community and showing up to share this important information and knowledge with us today. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you as always, man. Hey, uh, love, peace, and black power, good people. All right, there we go. And for everyone that has been watching, I want to tell you, um, I appreciate you for showing up for yourselves, showing up for your families, and showing up for our communities. Even in tough times like these, we have to band together, we have to educate ourselves, and we have to look to see how we can take our families to the next level. If we improve ourselves, we improve our family, we improve our family, we improve our community, we improve our community, we improve this country. So I want to thank all of you. I want to also remind you, that if you are an entrepreneur, you need to be in the top place in the world for African-American and black entrepreneurs. That is Traffic, Sales, and Profit with Lamar Tyler. We have a free Facebook group. Uh, we do live events. Once live events can be done again, we do live events, right, that are unlike anything else that you've ever seen or, or experienced. Um, and if you are married, desire to be married, you can be part of our other community, blackandmarriedwithkids.com, that I run with my wife now. We've run it for 12 years, the largest African-American marriage and parenting site on the web, we are actually broadcasting to both networks and platforms today to our audience of over 600,000 um, followers, fans, um, and, and families, right, on social media. So again, I just want to thank all you guys for tuning in. Make sure you follow those platforms. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and subscribe on the Black and Married and Traffic Sales and Profit page. And we will see you, right? We're back, back. Every day we're giving you brand new content to help you through these trying times by educating you and helping you to level up in your lives. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all. Peace.